for an organization, and I went on my own, so people have been sponsoring, and so I really want to thank our three amazing sponsors today. We have Eva, and you should be blessed with so much Torah in your life and in your heart. We have Lori, and for Lori, I want to thank you so much for all of your support, and also Mamash for Afua Shlema, for your 20-month-old granddaughter, Miriam Baradi. We should see amazing results. You should have the best doctors. She shouldn't even need to be under care anymore, she should be thriving and dancing and singing like a young toddler. Mm -hmm. And also for Aviva, I don't even know who this Aviva is, but she sent the most beautiful dedication. She says, in the merit of a safe and productive, meaningful and healing trip to the US for her and for anyone else traveling outside of Israel, and letting go of old stagnant beliefs and calling in newness and joy and for the healing of the whole world and the strengthening of trust in God and self. Amen. Those are our sponsors. Thank you guys so much. You could sponsor next week if you please. Um, shout outs also. Um, just thank you so much to Miriam for hosting. Also to my mama for a foolish lima as usual. Welcome home to our dear friend Lara. Mazel tov to the Mitzmans on your move. Shout out to Kayla Terzi. Um, thank you, Doron, for helping us with everything. Thank you, Tzfat, for hosting us. And of course, thank you, Hashem. Hashem, please let us really take this concept from Ekev and let it go deep into our hearts. Um, okay, now, just for fun, because I like having fun, um, also, I, I needed to give out some props. <laughs> so we're not going to get into the fact that we're entering into the Chagim, but I thought it was really, really important that everybody starts getting mentally prepared. So I have crowns for everybody to take home. And the reason is because we're getting closer to Elul. We still have two and a half weeks, but the king is in the field. And you might go home this week and be like, oh, there's two and a half weeks till Elul. I don't have to prepare. But if the king is in the field starting in Elul, we might want to prepare now. So everyone can take a crown. You can put it on your bathroom mirror, put it on your front door, remind yourself that the king is in the field. You can pass out the crowns. Wow. Facebook world, king is coming to it. Field near you. It's so good. Yeah, pass out some crowns. You can choose your crown. There's many different styles of crowns. But this is just to help remind us that we're getting prepared for Elul. So take the crowns, tape it up on your wall, and let's get ready to celebrate Elul. Now, let's say. Now, let's say that you are not. These are recycled props, as you my guess. Um, <laughs> but um, let's say, let's just say that you're not into taping a crown onto your wall or wearing it every day to prepare for Elul. I also brought these butterflies that I bought in Jerusalem. And if you want to start getting yourself in the mood for sukkis, you could take a butterfly or two and start decorating it or just put it next to your crown so that you remember because Sukkot is really one of the culminations of the Chagim and it's where we get to sit in the peace of all the hard work we did. So if anyone wants to take themselves a butterfly to decorate your sukkah, you could take two butterflies if you're in the mood. Um, but it's just context, Facebook world, is we're really in the vibe of getting ourselves ready to check in, see what's real for us. You could take a butterfly if you want. But uh, I really believe in making the Torah come to life. So if there's a food in the Parsha, cooking it for your Shabbos meal, um, if something is happening like the king is in the field, like how are you going to remember unless you like walk into your bedroom and there's a crown on the wall, right? So hook yourselves up, peeps. And that's how we did that. Okay, so that's, that's important. And why Dafka butterflies? Because butterflies always indicate transformation. And uh, we're getting into the period where Hashem calls upon us to transform. All right, would you like to know the title of this shiur? Yes. Great. So here's what it's called. What are we really doing? Okay, it's Parsha Ekev, but really this Parsha calls upon us to ask, what are we really doing with our lives? And we're going to learn how actually Moshe red-pilled the people. But first, I'm going to explain. Does anyone know? Here we have red pills. Red pills. Does anyone know 
know what it means to red pill somebody or where I get this context from. Anyone know? Uh, the Matrix. The Matrix. What's The Matrix? Uh, it's a show. It was no, a, it's movie. a movie. It's a yeah, movie. it was a very, very popular movie probably in the 1990s that came out that changed people's paradigm. And basically the movie is with Keanu Reeves. He is called Neo and it's kind of messianic because Neo means the one. The joke is that uh, where I used to work, I used to work, uh, whatever, where I used to work, they used to call me Neo. Because oh, movie, wow. Neo, yeah. and I did a really good job at that job, so they used to call me Neo. And Neo, the character in the movie, he takes a red pill because what happens, you have a choice, right? You have the choice in this movie of taking a red pill or a blue pill. Does anyone know contextually what was yeah. each? Okay, the blue pill would bring you back to the reality, quote unquote. The blue pill brings you back to the reality, as in like this world that we normally know and everything that we see with our two eyes, okay? And the red pill? The red pill will, will bring you into the deepest panemius of the world, like what is actually going on and how things actually work. Exactly. So the red pill actually reveals to us the truth of what's happening. So tonight we're going to give out red pills, just in case. You didn't have enough crowns or butterflies for transpiration. <laughs> and we will start with you, Holy Zamora. You can have a red pill. If you, do you want the truth? Yes. Do you want the truth? <laughs> do you want the truth, people? <laughs> All right. Well, if you want the truth, have a red pill or don't because they're candy and they're gross. Yay. <laughs> um, but that's really what we're going to be looking at is what does it mean that in Parsha Ekev, Moshe, red pills the people. Okay? So that's the concept of our shear. What are we going to do over the course of the next hour? I'm going to give you a summary of this week's Parsha. Then after that, we're going to focus in on this one theme that I believe uh, I learned from somebody in the room who wishes to remain nameless, that Moshe, <laughs> <laughs> Moshe was red-pilling the people and what that means. And then we're going to look at how to apply it to our lives. And at the end, I even made us a game. Oh. And it's a really fun game. It's called, What Are We Really Doing? The red pill game, but you'll get it once we get there. You're so cool. So you can see what it is. Um, okay, so let's do this. So what happens? What's in the Parsha? Where are we contextually? Well, uh, anyone know which book of the Bible we're in? Uh, Devarim. Devarim, very good. Does anyone know which Parsha Ekev is? The third, third Parsha. The third Parsha. You go, girl. I thought oh. everybody saw it. I just copied. No. <laughs> okay. So it's the third Parsha. We're in Dvarim. And listen what's happening, okay? We are a few days in, or a few Parshas in, to Moshe's goodbye speech to the people. We actually learned a little bit together earlier. Here, you can use one of these for a fan. Awesome. Um, all right. So... Moshe is standing there, and he's like, listen, I know we've been in the desert for 40 years. I know we've been doing all this stuff that you're used to. I know you're used to living your life like this. But now I want you to imagine that it's not Moshe talking to the people in the desert. It's Moshe talking to you and me and you and you and you, saying, listen, it's going to be a different reality. We are facing a period of our lives and in this world, actually, today, when I realized how crazy that Moshe is telling the people People, we're about to face a new reality. Things are getting different, and we have to get ready emotionally, spiritually. We have to get prepared. That's one of the best things I've ever seen right there. <laughs> There's an adorable lady, a generation older than me, who just took the wine bottle and is swigging out of it. With a crown on her head. With a crown on her head. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's the next bottle. So I, I, I realized, like, wow, Moshe is telling the people that they're about to experience a whole new reality and they have to get ready. Now, whatever you believe politically or not, um, I think we all see this. The world is changing, things are happening, and we have to sort of, like Moshe is still talking to us, get ready for a new reality, whatever that means. I thought that was really interesting. Whether it's collectively or just in your personal life, Moshe, same people. Things are changing. Are you ready? Can we get ready? What do we need to do to get ready? And that's, that's what we'll focus. So um, one of the ways that I advertised this year this week was by writing a wrap of the summary of the Parsha. And so I'm going to give it over slowly just so you know what's in the Parsha. I think I read the Parsha like five times and I still cannot sum it up on one foot. So if you really want to get into the Parsha this week, you've got to read it by yourself. There's a ton of different things that Moshe brings up that seem truly scattered. So I'll just tell you the list. Um, 
in the form of rap, just so that by the time you get to your Shabbos table, if you didn't have time to learn, okay, you know the topics, okay? So I was saying that basically Moshe is the man talking to all of his fans, right? That's the three million people that are waiting there to hear what he has to say, promising that if they fulfill all of the commands of Hashem, they will prosper in the land here, right? So, so far Moshe is just like, listen, you got to keep the commandments and then you will conquer and settle by God's hand. He also rebukes all of their failed attempts, hoping for the golden calf that they would repent. Rebellion of Korah into the earth they went, and the sin of the spies, he's asking, gosh, when were they gonna relent, right? So he's just, this is just a cute way to get the Parsha down. Like I said, <laughs> it's not so easy. Then he lists about Tavera, Masa, Kibrot HaTa'ava, which were all these different places where we messed up. Angering God, becoming like a day job. Like tantruming teens, we were testing like it was hot. Mm -hmm. But the second tablet shows that God forgives a lot. Mm -hmm. That's the court. Okay. Big Mo dropping the flow like the mana fell on us, because he's talking also about the mana and how we complain. But totally sustained, but he still made a fuss, forgetting that we live off of Hashem's utterance. And not just Peter Sourdough and Lapas. That was my best attempt to remember <laughs> utterance. <laughs> Moshe talks about how the land be flowing with milk and honey. With the seven species, you're going to get the best for your money. And we learn about how in this week's Parsha, we're coming into the land, and there's going to be all these different things. Yates olive oil, pomegranates, figs, grapes, wheat, and barley. But don't go serving idols, or you're bound to get haughty. Okay? Mm -hmm. We got the Shema, rewards and punishments too. The source of prayer is in here, especially in Abirkat Amazon. And it's coming at me and you with a reference to the Messianic Age of Truth and the resurrection of dead when it's going to be clear as blue. So those are the topics, right? He brings up, let's just review. Yes, yes, thank you. I had more fun wrapping it. But, okay, so let's review, okay? He promises we ought to fulfill the commands. Should we open the doors instead of turning the AC? Because I'm also schwitzy. What should we do? What, should we, what do you guys think? Should we open doors and let the air flow everywhere? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Do we make the AC strong? I should open that door. Maybe we do all of it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Commercial break. That's better? Yeah. Get a little flow? Yeah. Should we open the window? I think we should keep everything long because it looks okay. like we're all doing some um, Vikram yoga. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so sweet. It's okay. We're we're good. It's cool. Okay, so we have Moshe's talking to us. Now we, we're all just going to get, I'm going to review. So the Because you know what drives me crazy? I go to a shear, I leave the shear. What did you learn? I have no idea. You guys ever have that experience? Yeah. So, so I'm, let's review it so that we know really what's happening. So what is happening? Moshe is, come on, for participation. Uh, he's giving the red pill to the people. He's giving the red pill to the people. We still didn't find why. Moshe is talking to everyone. Can you imagine? You know that rock in Lion King? No, 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 And they, they take the lion up in the front of the rock and they raise him for everybody to see. So this is like Moshe. Everybody's watching and he's like, here's what you need to know before you enter the land of the <laughs> okay, so he's talking about fulfilling the commands, how to prosper in the land, being afraid that they're going to worship idols. No, don't worship idols, they're really bad. I have to tell you, when I've traveled in different countries, and I think you were telling me about India as well, and I saw the idolatry on the streets, I just, my first day in India, I just... I just started crying because there's just wow. idols everywhere. And I was like, what is going on? Yeah. And in Indonesia, they're like feeding in Thailand, every Cambodia. They feed the idols still. Yeah, that's yeah. real? Yeah, that's yeah. real. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, they also do it in the nail salons in LA. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But yeah, totally. There's so Moshe's like, listen, no idolatry. I'm not into it. And he again rebukes them, bringing up all the difficult things that happened. Okay, so everyone's understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then he says, oh, you complained about the mana, but the mana sustained you. And we have that famous, famous quote from this week's parsha. Does anyone know which one I'm referring to? Not by bread alone does man eat, but by the word of the living God shall he live. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna focus on that passage basically for the rest of the year. But we're gonna just. It is. Does everyone feel like they really understand where we're at? Yes. Yes, you can imagine it. We're just outside of Israel, everybody's there. It's actually mostly women, believe it or not, because so many of the guys died over the course of the last 40 years. Wow. 
yeah, I've asked a lot of rabbis about this. Like, who, okay, we celebrated too, but like, who are they marrying? All the dudes die, pretty much. Or like, right. 15,000 dudes died every year. So it's like this chick heavy group. We're on the other side of the Jordan. We're about to change our lives completely. And again, this is us, right? And here we are showing up, right? This year was invitation men and women. Look who showed up <laughs> the women. <laughs> I mean, God bless the men. There's a lot of great men viewers too, but like the women show up when we need to radically transform our lives and the nation, and we say, okay, what's up and what do we need to know? Let's get shit done. Hi. I'm sorry. Hi. Yes. Yes. Hi. Yes. 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 I'm telling you, how do you get things done? You get it done. You just get it done. <laughs> okay, so here, now we need to think, right? Moshe is dying. Now, raise your hand if you're a mom. Raise your hand if you're a mom. <laughs> we'll mom each other. Moms, raise your hands. Okay. Now, if you are going to send your kid off to a foreign country, you're going to send your kid off to a foreign country, you're not going to have contact with them again, and you know, God forbid, everyone should live till 120, you're going to die and never see them again. What do you want to, in class with Shalom, what do you want to impart to your children? What do you want them to know? Hashem's one. Oh, how interesting. <laughs> Is that what you just said? You yeah. just said Hashem's one? Yeah. Well, I'm going home. And thanks for coming this year. Yeah, Moshe is like, oh my God, they're going into Eretz Yisrael. There's tons of Avodah Zara there. Nobody in the land knows about Hashem. And here's my people. I just need you to know, please don't do Avodah Zara. Please, I'm begging you. It's ridiculous. It, it's like... I'm noticing to like anyone who does it, but like it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, <laughs> you know. And you see, like again, like I have so many friends that have all these Buddhas in their home. And I'm like, I know it's a cute yoga thing, but can I smash that? <laughs> it's not. It's not cute. It's actually a serious problem. These are spiritual people who believe in the oneness of everything. And um, and Moshe is like, please, 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 I beg you, please don't do it for us. That's what I need you to know, right? You guys are leaving me. I just did blood, sweat, and tears for you guys. I gave my whole life, all of my dignity, everything I have. I'm trying to convince you about Hashem. I brought you to Har Sinai. Please don't do a Bodhisattva. That was his biggest fear. Did you think, did you guys realize that? Credit to somebody in this room who I can't mention. <laughs> it's so awkward. <laughs> right, I didn't come up with that idea on my own. Did you ever think about that? I never thought about that, that, wow, Moshe's sending the people. Have you thought, because anyone just, yes, no. Right, we never thought about what it must have been like for Moshe as he's saying, all right, guys, just please, please know that there's one God. Now today, we don't so much know that taiva, that desire for a Vodazara, but then it was really popular. Today we have our different desires, you know, like our addictions. And it's a different form of a Vodazara, but yeah, it's the same. But the underlying message is exactly what Bella said, is the oneness of Hashem. Now, now that's like, okay, I could have looked that sheer up anywhere online. Thank you, God is one. I thought you promised something mind-blowing. What's up with that? Are you ready for what's up with that? Yeah. This is crazy. And this is, can I have the red pills? Here we are. This is where we're going to red pill the people. Do you know that last week in the Parsha, when it said that Moshe told the people, Ain od mil vado, now get ready for this one. I got this one from the person who told me the other chores. <laughs> they never knew it. What do you mean? They never knew it. They didn't get it. They knew Hashem is one. They knew there weren't other gods, but they didn't know. We take for granted because we grew up in this like Hasidic bubble of glory where we have the deepest confidence. They didn't know that Ain od mil vado. They didn't know that there was nothing but God. You have to think. These are the people in Egypt. They grew up with gods and statues everywhere. And Moshe's like, you want to get real? Do you want to get real? Do you want to be the people of God? Because let me tell you what's up. Either you can live your life and think that those, what are those weird gods called in Egypt? The, the Sphinx. You could think the Sphinx is real. You could think all those other gods are real. You could think all the necromancing and black magic is real. But if you want to know the truth, ain't no deal. And the people were like, <gasps> no, but the Ebe. I mean, this blew my mind. I haven't stopped thinking about this all week. Wow. Last year, we last week we read in the parsha, and it was great for giving shir. I was like, this week in the parsha, we have the ever famous teaching of Ein Od Mil Vado that there's nothing else but God. It's great. That's a great tagline if you need to give a shir. But I mean, hold on. Could you vibe with me for a second? They didn't know. They didn't know. 
where did they think that everything was coming from? If no one ever told you, what would you think? If you grew up in a land where there's idols everywhere and every you meet there's idols and you're going into a land where there's idols and people believe in all sorts of different gods and there's no physical Torah that you could just go study. There's not an abundance of teachers. I mean, we had the, the Sanhedrin as if, but it's not like all these millions of people had access. Okay, they're learning Torah, but still, this was my, I don't even, like, Hashem, how we do this like super genuine. So, like, we didn't know. Like, what? Okay, raise your hand if you take it for granted that ain't no mil vado, right? Someone you're in a time of stress or a time of panic or you don't know what to do or what decision to make and someone tells you, but listen, ain't no mil vado, there's nothing but God. They didn't know. And you know what else they didn't know and how this brings us back into this Parsha? This is why I said Moshe red pills them in the Parsha. He says, guys, these chicks, this is not what's sustaining you. This is not giving you your nutrients. And they're like, what are you talking about? Of course it is. There's iron, there's vitamin C in potatoes, there's sodium, you know, that'll help you not get a goiter. You know, there, it's, this is beer, it's Corona, like it, it, it's, gonna hydrate, it's gonna hydrate me. And Moshe's like, do you want the blue pill? Do you want to think the beer is what's hydrating? Okay, that's a bad example. But Moshe's asking the people, what do you want? Do you want to believe what's true or not? What's true is that not by bread alone does man live, and the people are going. And Moshe's like, it's what's in the bread. And they're like, the yeast? <laughs> no, it's what's in the bread. And they're like, the, I don't know, I don't read Gluten free? The flour? The flour? The flour. It's, it's giving us nutrients. It's filling my belly. What do you mean? God's like, I mean, God. Moshe's like, you want the red pill? And he said, yeah. Amen. And they took the red pill. What a sacrifice that I made this. <laughs> I have to swallow it now that I need to rough our hair. What's that? I don't play here. I'm so grateful that I don't like candy. In my Mike and Ike. But you know what? It's not the sugar of the Mike and Ike that's going to give me this high or this energy to go forward and do what I need to do tonight. What is it? What is Hashem. it? It's Hashem. What is it? What's in the food? A godly energy. Godly energy. Divine sparks. Kabbalistic energy that has been waiting 5,000, what year are we in? 781 years for me to elevate that divine spark that was in my thing. And the people are like, shut up. <laughs> no way. But if you think, like, all of us are like Hasidic students. We study, we learn, we understand that everything we're doing. Moshe was red pilling them. Moshe is, I don't know, who are the people in the movie that, that offered Neo the choice? It was, it was, uh, it's Morpheus, right? So Morpheus, which used to be Morpheus, is saying to him, listen, you, you want the truth or not? And when he goes into the matrix and he sees that reality is completely different from what he thought, he's mind blown. Now, think about this in today's society, right? Here we are, all in spot. You walk around, you tell people, you tell people any holy concept, and they're like, yes, right? <laughs> now take that, go to some... I don't know, Nebraska, Arkansas, Ohio, Los Angeles, California, Florida, go somewhere in the world and tell them that when you give tzedakah, you're going to get more money. And they're going to be like, no, when you give away your money, you're going to have less money. And we're like, no, no, that's not true. You know, or it's like, um, you know, we say, oh, that bad thing that happened to you, that was for the best. They're like, oh, you lost your mind? <laughs> they're like, oh, we just got a thousand shekel ticket, Baruch Hashem. They're like, okay, you're officially nuts. And you're like, no, I took the red pill. I have this legacy from that day before the people were going into Eretz Yisrael that says, no, it's not by bread that that man lives. So now. All right, so everyone's so far understanding this? Yes. Okay, now when I heard this last week that they didn't know that Eno Milvado, and then it was reiterated this week that not by bread alone does man live, but by the word of the living God does he live, I couldn't get over it. I never, I, I love getting into the mindset of the people. And I just like, because you know, like, 
they're just the babies. They're like little, they're like little babies. They didn't know anything. We've had thousands of years of Torah study developing on the shoulders of giants. The Baal Shem Tov and the Arizal and, and just Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and Rabbi Shlomo and the Lubavitch Rebbe and Rabbi Nachman, you know? We take Rabbi Nachman's teaching, there's no despair in the world. And we're like, there's no despair in the world. I crashed my car, there's no despair in the world. I broke up with my boyfriend, there's no despair in the world, you know? I'm having shallow bite issues, there's no despair. That's, but they didn't know this. And so now Moshe is taking, is peeling off the fake reality, saying, guys, it's time to transition. I gotta let you in on a few truths. Truth bombs. So I don't know. I can't see by anyone's reaction, but all I know is I couldn't stop thinking about this all week. So, and by the way, that so Bella had answered, "What do you want your children to know?" I can't believe you answered this. <laughs> Obviously, like I, that's my goal in life. I want to raise my kids. Hashem is one. Talk to Hashem about it. So my teacher Moralea Golam. <laughs> so this is amazing. You're like a living prophecy. My teacher Moralea Golam used to be help Rav Shlomo with conversions. And she says she'll never forget the day where she took this woman to convert. And at the Beit Din, they said, in one of the questions, they said, what do you want your children to know? And she said, that God is one. And Leah, like, basically, like, wow, dropped, shows, the, yeah, yeah. Shows. Leah wow. dropped to the floor. She's like, in my life, I wouldn't have thought to say that. And here you are, like, showing up, saying it, like, shows. Wow. So what else is in the last week and this week's parasha? Because remember, we're 36 days in Moshe Talking. Shema. What's the Shema telling them? Mm-hmm. Hashem is one. It's not, these potato chips are not separate. I'm not getting my sustenance from this little crackalack. I'm getting my sustenance from the sparks that are in here. And not just that, not just the mitzotzot and the sparks concept. In Kabbalah, we have this idea that before the world started, or before this world came to be, there was a shattering of energetic vessels, and that, that shattering cast these kind of magical sparks all over the world. And the reason we're here in this world is to pick those sparks up and elevate them. I'm telling you because these holy people know this. And now you do too. <laughs> now you do too. But it's more than that. Has anyone actually seen the Matrix in this room? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So do you know what all the advertising for the Matrix looks like? Yeah. It's digital. Code. Digital. It's code. Yeah. Exactly. It's digital code. And now I want to bring us into the story from the one and only Rabbi Anava. Okay. So does everybody know that Rabbi Anava had these near-death experiences? Yes. Okay. Now you might say, "Oh, you're so weird. Why are you talking about near-death experiences? You can't prove anything." Everything that he talked about in his near-death experience, and you can watch it online, people have really looked into and seen that it's in line with our tradition. So does anyone know the part of the story where he's dying in the cab next to his girlfriend, and his body starts to come out of the cab? So here's the basic story. He was a party animal before he did tshuva. It's okay that I say that because he... He publicizes it. He mamish publicizes it and wants people to publicize it. Um, so it's Alona Nava, if you want to look it up online, highly recommend, very holy leader in our community. So, okay, we are have two, 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 fine. So he's in the cab. Did you hear him last night? Weird. Well, and I'm not surprised, prophetess no. you. <laughs> okay, so he had taken oh, some yeah. drugs or something like this, whatever, and they're partying, and they get in the cab as if to go to the next party, and he, he knows he has this really crazy feeling, and he basically dies. And, and this is like proven medically by the report. And what starts to happen is his body, and if I'm getting this wrong, pardon? Pardon? His soul. His soul. Thank you. And his soul started to come up out of his body. And he was like, whoa, like that's my body, that's my girlfriend, that's the cab, what's going on? And then he says it starts to go up higher, and he like sees the top of the cab and the other cabs, and it starts to go up higher, except for as what happens when a person dies, the soul leaves the body, but it sort of hovers over the body for a certain amount of time. And it, it's kind of getting higher and higher, distancing, and but it's following the cab, wherever the cab is going, because it's part of it. And then he said he had the weirdest experience, because he's getting now up like higher to this point, and they're about to cross under a bridge, but he's still kind of oriented with his body. He's going, shoot, there's a bridge, what am I gonna do? Am I just gonna crash into the bridge? Like, what's gonna happen, you know? And he said, in that moment, and this is exactly the matrix comparison, okay? In that moment that his, the, the cab went under the bridge and his soul went through the bridge, like a very trippy experience if you're used to being a body. And as he went through that bridge, does anyone know what he saw? Hebrew letters. Hebrew letters, basically code. Code. Because, yeah, because every single thing in this universe, what it says in this week's parsha in Devarim 8.3, that not by bread alone does man eat, but by the utterance of the living God, Hashem created this world through the Hebrew letters. 
Every single thing is created of Hebrew letters. Am I? <laughs> My homage is created of Hebrew letters. Worst example ever. <laughs> my Bible is created of Hebrew letters. Right? No, but my iPhone is created from Hebrew letters. My alarm clock is made from Hebrew letters. This is called a shangi, which only Israelis would think of inventing. It's half sugary juice and half beer. <laughs> it's made of Hebrew letters. We're all, everything, our flesh, our bones, the mic and Ikes, these candles, this apartment, these walls, are made of Hebrew letters. That's why, for example, the Baal Shem Tov and his constituencies could literally walk through walls because they could see their way through the code. So Hashem is saying to them, I know it looks like we're in the desert, and I know it looks like you're just crossing through a sea, but if, if you want, I'll give you the red pill, and you'll start to see that every single thing is made of godliness, and it's all one, and it's a code. It's literally like a code. So, for example, um, what he's saying is reality is not what we perceive. Now, again, all of us, I felt really funny giving this shear here, because all of us already know that. Uh, we already know that reality is not what we perceive. Again, if you go to the West, and you tell somebody about your lifestyle, you know, who could think of a good example of what we know is obvious, and they're like, are you out of your mind? Like, that is not true. Like, can anyone give an example? No. What's that? I, I went to New York and we kept saying, thank you, Hashem. And everyone's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, Hashem. Like, it's Hashem. And he's like, what do you mean? But Hashem is in the shul, not here. And I'm like, what do you mean? What? Right. And, but, but yeah. So even just walking around saying thank you to the air, people are like, what are you doing? And all of us are walking around going, like, thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. And if you walk around the streets of LA saying thank you, Hashem, like they're going to be like, okay, she's clearly lost it. She's talking out loud to the air. Yeah, what's another example? Um, what do you do for a living? Oh. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Yeah, what do you say? Oh, for the men especially? I work for Hashem. I work for Hashem. Right. right. What's the one? Do you do Oh, 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 here's my favorite one. What if I was to tell like a regular person in the mall? They're like, oh, what do you do every day? I'm like, I wake up and I go to the cemetery. <laughs> They're like, every day? I'm like, yeah, I spend my mornings in the cemetery. <laughs> There's a holy cemetery here where people, pray. I try to pray the morning prayers there. So, right, that's like crazy. You gotta be like, oh, it's really weird. But we know that reality is not what we perceive, right? Or even... Or, oh, oh, another example that someone's giving is we, we walk into a door and we kiss it. <laughs> if you're a Jew, walk in and kiss the door. What? If you're a Jew, walk in and kiss, kiss the door. door. What? You know, or like all these different practices that, or, you know, even a man and a woman not touching, you know, for marriage, yeah. like they'll be like, oh, or when I was becoming religious, you know, and they're like, you're not even going to kiss him before you think about marrying him? <laughs> no. like, you know, these things. So the thing is that we understand this because we know that reality is not what we perceive it. But back then, this was... It was literally like the movie Matrix came off of this week's Parsha in Ekev. And another thing, that, another example that someone gave, it's like a website. When you're interacting with a website, you think you're having this user experience, but what's really happening? Code. It's code. It's code. So there's somebody doing the back end. Does anyone here do computer technology? No. Someone's doing H. G. I mean, backslash. I know. We live in. Smart. I don't know. Everybody I here is either, either a yogi, a healer, or a Torah teacher. Is <laughs> anyone in here not a yogi, healer, or Torah teacher? <laughs> Nobody raised their hands. Yeah. Right. So no one here codes. But essentially, when you're interacting with a website, you know that what's behind it is the code. So. Another amazing example of this that I love, and remember the title of the shir was, what are we really doing here anyways? Uh, Ram Das, who became like a kind of guru in the West, actually a nice Jewish boy. And actually I watched his documentary. Lately it was pretty kosher and pretty interesting. So if you wanna find a kosher movie on Amazon, because it's very rare and hard, that's one you could check out. Ram Dass. He says that imagine everybody you meet is God in drag. Wow. Wow. <laughs> love it. I love it. I love it. You're God in drag. Oh I'm God, God in drag. You're God in drag. Everybody we interact with is God in drag. 
So oh if you God. interact with someone miserable at the grocery store, somebody who has been red pilled like us, let's say that you're at the grocery store and someone's like giving you a really hard time and they're really mean to you and they're really angry, we know to look at the situation and be like, wow, Hashem, this is you dressed in an angry person so that I have the experience of dealing with anger today. Fascinating. Right? Whereas someone else who wasn't yet red pilled and believes that reality is what we see thinks, ew, angry person, they're stupid, they're mean, they're rude. And we're like, oh my God, I can't believe I had to interact with an angry person today. What do I need to learn from this? So, this, I mean, this is like to going to seminary of uh, girls who like never learn Torah and, and, and like blowing their mind open with everything they're seeing, experiencing, feeling. Uh, uh, hearing it's all messages from God. And this is what's happening, right? Again, imagine everybody you meet is God in drag. So how does that really apply to Ekev? Okay. So, all right, so we have this line, right? Ki lo al halechem levado yichyeh adam, ki al kol matzapi Hashem yichyeh adam. That's 8.3. By the way, I looked up something cool about bread, because I, I thought maybe I'll research bread for this parsha. And just a fun fact, is that actually the word company in it's uh i learned this from Alyssa. oh i can't read it some really cool chick online named Alyssa, a nice jewish woman says that company comes from co i think it's it's late latin co like together forget the m pan pan is bread me company is when you gather to eat bread together and that's actually what a companion is also is someone you bring to bread with um, Isn't that interesting? That really cool. And that's kind of the idea also, because we have all these halachas that come up in the Sitz Parsha about if you're sitting with someone and eating a meal, you have to share Torah so that we know that God is one. And we know that God is one. And also, it's not the food that's sustaining us. It's right. our spiritual connection to God. Or the way that Mora Leah Golam explained it is that mitzvahs, you know, in this week's Parsha, we talk about, you know, if you do the mitzvahs, you'll get the reward. Mitzvahs don't equal prosperity. It's not that if you give tzedakah, you're going to get rich. Mitzvahs allow you to connect to God, and that connecting to God allows for the prosperity. Mm. Right? Food is not satiating us. When we connect to God through our food, with our gratitude, that connection to Hashem is what's satiating us. God bless you. And we can prove this because all of us have done emotional eating, and all of us know that even if you start full, <laughs> you can eat the whole fridge and you're still not full because it's not about the satiation of feeling okay or ourselves or it's just satiated. It's not from the food. It's from the connection with God. And that's also why they say that, like, for example, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, God bless you, could just eat carob and be fine because he knew that it was the connection from Hashem. Mm -hmm. In fact, I learned about this practice called sun gazing. Have you guys, you know what this yeah. is for sure. Sun gazing is essentially that there's, I think I may have even given this over in a shear before, that you can actually like look at the sun at certain parts of the day, and just from that experience of taking in the nutrients for the sun, you have like all the food that you need. Of course, don't try this at home, you have to know the right hour or whatever, but the idea basically, again, is that Moshe is dropping on them this completely new idea that there's something deeper in the bread that causes man to live. Wow. There's something deeper in this whole experience that causes us to to live. Um, okay. And also, so we're, we're doing good. We're doing really good on time. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really good. Um, okay, so the parasha is called Ekev. And usually the commentators say about this, like Ekev, like it's talking about the mitzvahs, Ekev means heel, that we trample on with our heel. Or it's talking about the mitzvahs that we like step on because they're not important to us. I had a different idea. I thought maybe this week's called Ekev, and Ekev it applies a heel because your heel is the least sensitive place on your body, right? Mm -hmm. Can you is there a, is there a lesser sensitive mm -hmm. place on the body than the heel? Elbow. The elbow is less sensitive. Yeah, yeah. if you like pinch your elbow of skin, you don't feel it. All right, there's like no good. Yeah. I yeah. they call this chicken, right? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, it's a it's a willy. Oh, willy. Okay. <laughs> 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 but the yeah, echid is where you begin thing. to get to get desensitized. And again, this is a super challenge because if anyone hasn't heard these ideas before, they're like. Wow, that's cool. Let me try to apply that to our lives. Now, what do we do when we do know all these ideas and we still get desensitized? And we still forget that it's not lunch that satiated us, but Hashem. Hey, hang out with Bella, you'll get a lot of thank you, Hashem. <laughs> but how do we renew this sensitivity to recalling 
there's something deeper. Reality is not as we perceive it. I don't know, guys. I thought this was really cool. So how does it apply to our lives, okay? So here's my question. I want to introduce. I always wanted to teach an entire course called What Are We Really Doing? So it came down into one. What are we doing when we go to the bathroom? What are we really doing when we sleep? What are we really doing when we're eating? What are we really doing when we're talking to somebody? What are we really doing living in this land? What are we really doing when we're in a contraction? What are we really doing when we see anger on the street or even taking medicine? So here's, I just wanna go through a review and then we're gonna play the game of what are we really doing? And you guys get to get, you're gonna get random cards, all right? You don't know what you're gonna get and you have to try to think about what we're really doing. So I'm gonna give some of my examples because uh, I think it's just, you know, it changes life into just waking up, maybe praying, walking through the day, doing your thing, um, and like then like finishing the day to like mind blow, like Moshe was telling us, I'll catch up real quick. Moshe is saying, I want you to know something. Not everything is as it seems. There's only one God and God is everything, and everything comes from God. They didn't know this one. They didn't know. So what happens when we're going to the bathroom? Why does God have us go to the bathroom so often? What do you think we're practicing? This is just my theory, but I think it's really legit. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing when we go to the bathroom? Okay, I'll give you a hint. Elsa. Let it go. <laughs> just like that. I believe that Hashem has us go to the bathroom 10 times a day, especially women, because who is it harder to practice letting go for? Us. Dude's like, yeah, whatever, okay, that's Bunk. We're like, I can't, I'm so upset. I need to talk about this, I need to process this, or maybe you're not, but I do. Right? <laughs> Letting go. Going to the bathroom is every day Hashem has, he's not subtle. I don't think that I'm making this up and it's wrong. We go to the bathroom 10 times a day, not just, oh, I really gotta go to the bathroom, but time to let go again. Time to let, imagine if every single time we went to the bathroom, we had the thought in our head, okay, what should I let go of now? Okay, wow. maybe after you go to the bathroom, because you don't want to like think thoughts and you have to really, but, <laughs> right? But, Letting go. That's really what we're doing when we're going to the bathroom. We are practicing letting go. Fazia, please. Wow. Thank you. Processing or processing. Sleeping. What are we doing? What are we doing when we go to sleep? Letting go. Letting go. We're also letting go, but I think we're returning our soul to Hashem. We're returning a piece of our soul to God to charge. We're, we are our iPhones plugging in at night and saying, okay, take me back to my soul. We're going back to our source. Every night we go back to source. Your soul travels. You can go to different yeshivas and shamayim. We talked about this two weeks ago. You're connecting to your source. You're going back. You're, 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 you're releasing your soul into higher realms, you know? And I've said this so many times, but I'll say it again. It says the entire work of the Kohen Gadol and Yom Kippur was just with the taking of sleep. What? Yes! <laughs> and you know how much the Kohen Gadol does in Yom Kippur? It's not to read the service takes 10 pages. He has to change his clothes, put his clothes on, wow. go to the mikvah, change his clothes, do some sprinkling of blood, cut some, you know, throats like, of animals. And not that that's any better. I mean, Hashem knows, not me. <laughs> Don't be a vegan trying to give over uh, sacrifices. <laughs> no, but seriously. And then all of that was just for the sake of his sleep at night. So, 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 we, so we go to the bathroom. We're supposed to, we're, we're, we're not just going to the bathroom. We're practicing letting go. We're going to sleep. You're connecting to your source. Why is that just going to sleep? Eating. What are we doing when we eat? We're elevating yeah. sparks. We're, we're really, actually, what does elevating sparks mean? We're bringing the messianic era. Every bite we take that elevates a certain spark, we're saying, okay, one bite closer to the messianic world peace. We're bringing world peace. If we have kavana, we're bringing world peace every time we eat. If you have kavana to elevate the sparks, you're literally putting another piece in the puzzle for the messianic era. What are you doing when you're talking to somebody? By the way, this year is called What Are We Really Doing? Talking to God in drag. And what else? Come, let's do here and not afraid of the camera. Okay, so I've run into you on the street. Guys, I've only known Bella for like 11 months, maybe, or 12 months. But when I met Bella and when I interact with Bella, do you know what I'm really doing amongst many things? Talking to God in drag. I am taking a soul oh, yeah. that I've interacted with in many, many, many previous lifetimes, likely, because souls travel together. And I'm doing my soul fixing with her for generations. For the, I'm fixing the past, present, and future every time I interact with somebody. Every time I even interact with somebody in the grocery store, says Rav Shlomo, I'm fixing my soul. 
You know, I used to do a lot of group work, and I would say to the kids who came, you know, I'm 37 years old, which means I've been waiting 37 years to meet you. Wow. Whoa. And that's not an exaggeration, because that's what happens every time we meet. I've waited my whole life to meet you. And that's not a compliment. I mean, it feels like a compliment, but like we just met, right? So I had to wait my entire life wow. to connect with you, because we have a soul fixing, or else we wouldn't have met, right? There's how many billion people in the world? Eight? Eight billion people in the world. You meet the people you need to meet because you have a fixing with them. What are we really doing here? Here's another one that I learned. Oh, I wish I remembered from where. The land of Israel. What are we doing? What are we really doing here? Are we just living on the land? What are we doing? No, we have, we're doing God's mission here. That was the whole purpose. You are so on point, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> the land is a, give, a tool given in order to accomplish the mission. Yeah. For a purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Quote. <laughs> we're not here because we chose to live in the land of Israel. We chose to visit the land of Israel. We're here because our actions in this place are creating a mural and a picture that we can't even imagine. Oh. What about, what about when you're seeing somebody obnoxious or angry or yelling at somebody? What's really happening here? It's a mirror. Wow. It's a mirror. Every time I'm triggered by somebody. Let's see, was I triggered by somebody? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, well, I mean, whatever. Like, you did, yeah, of course. It was strangers. I was triggered by strangers. But what is happening? I'm not just, and that's already advanced talk. I was triggered because I'm kind of owning it, right? But again, we're saying we're peeling off the mask of reality and saying, what am I really doing here? Oh my gosh, Hashem is showing me a vision of that thing that I need to fix, of that thing that I have inside of me. Oh my gosh, what are we really doing here? Um, what about when you're in a really bad mood, when you're in a contraction? What's happening there? What are we, what's really happening? Oh, we're, we're getting a text out. <laughs> We're in a bad mood. Or Say what? Getting ready to expand. Getting ready to expand. Right. What if you trained your children right. saying you're in a bad mood, sweetie? Wow, that's amazing. Uh -huh. You're contracting because you're be about awesome. to birth something new. That would be awesome. Right? That would be awesome. <laughs> that's what's really going on here. I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I hear I got a quote on this that I just thought was beautiful. Don't resist the change that's taking place in your life right now. Change is an opportunity for growth. Forcing things to stay the same will only further hinder your potential. Wow. Don't resist the new life. Embrace it. And that's essentially what was happening for the Jewish people. We were resisting this new life. We didn't know what to do. And Moshe's like, it's okay. This is just a contraction for an expansion. So here's another beautiful one. Has anyone ever seen, has anyone ever seen somebody um, Jewish take a pill that they're about to take, and then you see them go, blah, 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 blah. Yes. You have seen that, right? Yes. Has anyone else seen that? No. Oh, this is an amazing thing. I, it's, I, okay. When I was in Uman, actually it's the first time, but the only time. Mm -hmm. When I was in Uman, I was there with two of my awesome friends. Their names were Mert and Khabiba. And so they had a headache or something like that. I don't know, we were dehydrated. And so I see them go, blah, 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 Advil. And I'm like, you definitely don't say a bracha on the Advil. What are you doing? And then recently, the holy mitzmans were at my house, and uh, they also had a headache or something like this. And so I, I brought them a Tylenol or whatever, and I see them going, blah, 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 and then they put the pill in my mouth. I'm like, oh, I remember that from Uman. I never learned this, but Talmud Rachot 60a, Shulchan Aruch 234, and Mishnah Bura 6 says like this. We have an idea from the sages, from all these sources, that when you take a pill, don't take the pill, because what are you going to do? You're going to be like me and be like, oh, God bless Advil, <gasps> or like peppermint yeah. oil, and I have a headache, right? And Advil isn't working or whatever. Peppermint oil, I'm like, oh, I love peppermint oil. God bless peppermint oil. Wow. But I'm putting all the healing qualities in the peppermint, peppermint oil. oil and in the Advil. Well, what's the hubba lava lava? Yehi ratzon milpanecha, Hashem elokai, sheye esek zeli lerefua. He will fechi namata. May it be your will, yeah. Lord my God, that I you're taking. That. You have your pill or you have your true five. It's a holistic or not holistic. It doesn't matter. The point is not by bread alone can eat, but by living. This is exactly what I'm trying to say. It's summed up by this what are we really doing in taking a pill? May it be your will, Lord my God, that this activity will bring healing to me. For wow. you. Oh, did I just stop the quote? I did. For you are the free healer. Wow. 
You are the healer. I'm just taking this pill. I was so amazed when I saw my friends taking the pill, saying something before. I'm going, what are you doing? They're like, well, it's not the pill that heals me. And I'm like, oh, you took the red pill way before I took the red pill. Yeah. We're using wow. the example of the Matrix. Wow. Have you guys seen the Matrix? Yeah. Yeah, so when Neo, which means the one that's wearing messianic, is offered the red pill, he's offered the ability to see what's really going on. And Moshe has been dropping some serious bombs on the people of Earth. He's like, okay, guys, it's time. It's time. Like, are you ready to be initiated into the world of the spiritual? Yes. So that's what we're really doing here. And what's amazing um, is that, okay, so so first of all, I was just like mind blown by everything that was happening and revealing itself. Is everyone understanding the main point? Kind of, I'm trying to really just give over one point tonight. It's re-waking ourselves up, redoing that sensitivity of the ekem, the heel, to realize what the heck am I really doing here? Not to Say what? We're in the matrix. We're in the matrix, and we're the privileged ones that took the red pill, and now we have to kind of like re revamp that dose, totally. right? Totally. How though? Like, what are we doing? So that's our, we're raising consciousness about it, and that's what we're gonna do with our game. We're gonna like wow. involve everybody, if whoever wants, if whoever doesn't want, doesn't have to. We're raising consciousness. Like, you wanna put, the, you like the bathroom tour? Put a sign next to your door saying, I'm letting go. Put a sign next to your bed saying, I'm returning my soul to the shed. Before you eat, can, you know, we're, we're, all the conscious people are always, with food, for example, you can't just be constantly conscious around food. Like, even just increasing that awareness that this is also your life. It's saying to Hashem, thank you, Hashem. So you're seeing the reality. You're seeing the reality. Yeah, you took a fat red pill. <laughs> profound experiences I've ever had in my life. I got yeah. really sick one morning on the way yeah. to Shul. I really wanted to go to Shul. It was happy being in. David Sachs was giving over Torah. I love being early. I get the front seat. So excited. And all of a sudden, I just got sick. I was so good. And at the time, I was drinking my coffee. So I was like, coffee and Shul. Oh, so 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 <laughs> there was. It was Gigola. And for some reason, I got sick. And I found myself, sorry to be graphic, and I've said this story also a few times, but throwing up. And in my throwing up, and I was in the bathroom, so I didn't really whatever. I was like, wow, Baruch Hashem. No. Baruch Hashem, because at that, I had like a, a Muna moment where I was like, wow. I just knew, you know those moments. Where like, like, this is not really anything but Hashem. Yeah, no, it's not that she how can I get sick? Baruch Hashem. I'm fine. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, again, Hashem. such simple, simple Torahs, but I think, <laughs> for me at least, I don't want to pretend like I have this down, because I don't. Even studying all this all week long, I didn't actually Mikadesh my food more, but okay, constant awareness. That's why we learned the Parsha. Every week, every year. So then I decided to look into the Haftorah because we're right now in the period of the seven Haftorahs of comfort, of consolation. Last week we had Nachamu, it was really beautiful, and this week we're still in Isaiah. And so as a therapist, I'm always, always reading the Parsha with therapist eyes. Always. I can't help it. I, I can't even turn it off. I, I, yeah. And, and I saw something crazy. I opened the Haftorah, and the first line is, I spit, I'm officially a Bible teacher. <laughs> yep. And Zion said to Hashem, that's us, Hashem has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. And I was like, whoa, projection, right? A lot of times when I'm working with clients and I hear blame, I know immediately to test out the reversal. They're complaining. The first line of the Haftarah and Isaiah, they're saying, God has forgotten me. He's forsaken me. What's really happening? They forgot me. We're forgetting God. We forgot God. We forsook God. And so we're projecting all our stuff around God. And literally, that was the beginning of the Haftorah, which is exactly like, no, he didn't forget us. We forgot him. We need to red pill ourselves again. Wow. Right? And then what's amazing is that also, that, in, that interestingly, at the end, uh, uh, like also in the Haftorah, so it's not, ex our Haftorah begins on. Um, like the chapter after it, but the chap it's in the same chapter as this idea that we're Orla Goyim, that we're a light to the nations. This is the, con our whole Haftorah comes out from this idea that we're a light to the nations. And that's the energy of this week's Haftorah, essentially. And what does that come to mean? What does it mean that we're enlightened to the nations? We're supposed to basically be red killing everybody, not through coercion, God forbid, or forcing, but by us living such a reality where we see the truth in things that like when I first saw my friends Chaviva and Mur take blah, 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 blah before their pill, I was like, that is so cool. I want that consciousness yeah. that this is not the pill that's healing me, but God. And so just by the way they live, they red-pilled me. And that's what I think partially maybe what it means to be an or 
like the name, but it's light to the nations. Just wow. let's show people the light because that sounds kind of pretentious and annoying. But to like live the light wow. and know what we're really, really Break doing here. Break out of the matrix. Break out of the matrix, <laughs> or is it into the matrix? Which one are we trying to do? Is it out of the matrix? <laughs> I don't know. So first of all, Lachaim, Lachaim, Lachaim. Say what? Break through. Oh, it's always break, break through. through the matrix. I don't know. Right. Okay. Okay, so that's like, first of all, that's like the basics. Wow, that's really cool. And that was the first year I've given in under an hour in a long time. So I'm really proud of myself. Here's what I like to do, okay? I mean, oh, that was great. Yeah. Well, but we're not done. But thank you. But yes. It's really good. Now, now we're going to get real. We're going to teach each other. But no one, again, don't feel pressure to say, if you have to go, if you want to move around, you don't want to share. It's just, it's like, well, it turns it into a far bring in and it makes it really practical. And, well, I had a lot of fun. Yay. Okay, so just to review really quick what we discussed today <laughs> is the idea that this year was called What Are We Really Doing? Learning how Moshe red pills the people in Parsha Ekev. Mm -hmm. We learned that it's the third Parsha in the book of Dvarim, and we learned about all the different things, the context, what Moshe is doing, it's his death message. What do you want to tell your children when you're going to die and they're going to live a life on their own? He rebukes them for a few of the different problems there were. He uh, talks about sustenance, and then we talk about the land having all these different species, and this famous, famous quote that says, it's not the pill, it's not the bread, it's God, right? Um, so we talked about how his greatest fear was that they would do a Vodazara, he's worked his whole life to bring them into this concept of Eno Milado, that there is nothing except for God, that it was totally and utterly mind-blowing for them. Um, and yeah, essentially that he's red pilling them, and <clears throat> The reality is not what we perceive, just like we talked about the difference between a regular conversation between someone in the West that might be secular and like a group of people in spot. It's like, oh, my car broke down today and I I dropped my macaroni and cheese all over the floor, so I haven't eaten Baruch Hashem. <laughs> and you're like, that, that, that was a horrible day. You're like, that was the best thing that could have happened to me. I, I, I trust. What? Yeah. <laughs> I believe in the carbs. <laughs> 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 this, this car was a kavara for my sins. I'm so grateful. You know, yeah. uh, you know just <laughs> either or. And we <laughs> talked about how, how it's not just from bread, the commandment, but the, the utterance of Hashem, meaning also the sparks that are in it, but also this idea of code. And like Rabbi Anarva, when he almost or when he died. He went up through the bridge and he saw that everything was made of Hebrew letters of code. That's the truth. If this was a website right here and we could peel back the screen, wow. the HTTP would be like Dalit, Bav, Bet, Reish, how do you spell for it? Very nice. Hey, Good right, job. You know, or like, but not even, because like Ariella, it's not just Aleph, it's Aleph becomes Aleph, Lamed, Pe. And then the oh, Reish becomes Reish, Yud, Shin. And then all of those filter out. It's literally a code. Sorry, I didn't explain that before. That helps explain the matrix. Did yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Does anyone need to re-explain that, that was idea? Really cool. No, I don't. <laughs> Everyone cops that idea? Okay, let me just tell you what it is. Basically, every Hebrew letter is made up of different Hebrew letters, and then those are going to be made up of different Hebrew letters. So it's literally a fractal of the divine utterance of God, like. <laughs> How do you say that? Fractaling into what we call reality. So if we peeled back the scene on this beautiful sheer here, we see all this amazing Hebrew letter code that indicated that we have this greater, higher purpose. We learned that cute Torah about company. Company actually comes from the idea of co, like together, even in red, on company or a companion, someone you eat bread with. And the idea that now we're reinvigorating our consciousness that when we're eating, we're going to pull down Hashemness. That the mitzvahs or food don't equal what they don't equal prosperity or situation, but it's the connecting to God that brings these things to our life. Um, we talked about the idea of ekev, how to apply it to our lives. We talked about examples of going to the bathroom, sleeping, eating, talking to somebody, living in the land, when in contraction, seeing anger on the street, or even taking a pill. I will post the prayer for the pill Yay. in the comments, okay. Bezrat Hashem, and the source. I'll post the whole article. It's rad. We then talked about the Haftorah. And how in the Haftarah we it um, uh, opens with this idea that we're like, but Hashem, you forgot us. But really, like that's not what's happening. The whole idea of Moshe is like, don't forget God, don't forget God, don't forget like what's really happening here. You know, especially I, my my biggest especially is in human interaction. And then finally, that the Haftarah also comes from this idea that we live for the Holy, and that that's our idea is, you know. Darkness is light obstructed, right? Essentially. Right. Right. So we are just shining light onto that which is hidden. Right. 
That's all we're doing. We're just saying, oh my God, guys, this whole world, this whole corona epidemic, this whole craziness of your life, this thing you didn't expect. One sec, watch this, watch this. And you pull back the curtain. And they're like, oh, it's all holiness and connecting to God and myself and my purpose. And I'm on a mission to spread this light of reality in the world. Whoa. And yeah, that's, that's what Ahab is. is it's, it's peeling wow. back that screen to see what's really going wow. on. So go, Torah. Yay. Yay. Wow. Go, hey, Torah. And now, Facebook world, you can stay on or go off. We're going to pass that. We're going to pass the iPad. So here's what you do. Here's what we're really doing. You can, everybody can pull out a card, do it backwards so you don't see it. You can take one or two or three. If you don't like it, you can pull it back. But uh, then we're going to just go around. And for anyone who wants, I want you to come up with your ideas. Some of them are repeat, but what? Uh, there's like more. Also, everyone feel free to get food and come back in. And also, thank you, Hashem. Thank you, thank you, Miriam, for hosting. And thank you guys for learning. I think you should stay around because there's a thank lot of so amazing people here. That was yeah. incredible. Can you say really, really Here we go, here we go. Take, we'll just do a few. We'll just yeah, do a few. Let's see. Take a few. And the question is, what are we really doing here? And you're going to share your insight, if you please, really with cool. Facebook, OK? <laughs> And you can say it out loud once you get it. Pass them around. Take a few. What are we really doing here? Okay, I'm just challenging you. I don't have the answers. Can I look at it? Can I look at it? Yeah, yeah, you can look at all of them. You can look at all of them. <laughs> all right, who wants to take two? All right, can I pass the... Okay. Wow, I was just saying today, I'd like to, I'd like to do this. Okay, wow. all right. Are we ready? Does everyone get them? Keep passing them around if you want more. You don't have to take them. You don't have cards to make. Oh, Everybody here. Right. All right. Know, so all right. Who wants? All right. Here we go. Facebook, Facebook world. Facebook, lovely ladies. If anyone doesn't want to be seen, you don't have to be seen. Do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, perfect. You can hold it. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Say your name. Right. Here. Here you go. Here, I'll hold it. Okay. All right. So, what'd you get? Two very light ones, actually. Okay, so what are we dealing with addiction and dealing with sadness? Oh. <laughs> I know, I was All right, let's say what they are. Do you want to say your name? <laughs> Rachel, yoga or exercise. So what are we really doing when we do yoga or exercise? And while we were in Chutzlaretz. Why we're in Chutzlaretz? What are we really doing in Chutzlaretz? Hi, so hi, my name is Deborah. I got, <laughs> I got sinning. Yeah, what are we really doing when we're sinning? That's that huge. That's so a really strange. important one. I love this one. We're going to start with you. Nice earrings. Okay. I really like them. Thank you. On your, on your computer. computer. What are we really doing when you're on your computer? I translated to phone. If anyone does not want to be on, just tell me. I won't do the screen on you. Very we want to say your name? Um, Elior Haya. Speaking to someone you love. What are you really doing when you're speaking to someone you love? Yeah. And interacting with someone you don't like. Oh, nice you got both of those. <laughs> oh, and? Oh, that's so perfect for you. Oh, my God. Oh, getting yeah. ready for Shabbat. What are you doing wow. when you're getting, what are you actually doing when you're wow. getting ready for So You're not just yeah. cooking and cleaning. Okay? Skia and I got, what are we doing when we are sitting in traffic? Yeah, what are we actually doing when we're sitting in traffic? Okay? Wow. Okay? Wow. Hi, sorry, Kishon. Hi. Being in nature. What being are we really nature. doing when we're being in nature? Yes, Sarah. Okay, and the <laughs> Hi, everybody, I'm back. Hello. What are yours? Mine is, is what are you doing when you're doing a to-do list? <laughs> what are you doing when you're... <laughs> what are you doing when you're doing a hobby? Okay, amazing. All right, so here we go. Are you ready for some really brilliant wisdom from my friends? Okay, start us off. Well... What do you think? I'm really There's no sure. right answer, and everyone okay. online, please feel free to comment and say what you think. So I got, what do you really think that's happening when you sin? Yeah, what are you right? really doing when you sin? Wow. So and anyone can answer thought, anyone else's yeah, too. Please, I think I it's the same. As, it goes along it's, with mine. Oh. Just really learning to be in the present moment. To really not in just so, really When you're stuck in traffic, you're saying it's learning. What are you really doing? You're learning to be in the present moment. Wow. And by the way, guys, we take this as obvious, but like, take this to somebody who's not yet tuned into spirituality, and they'll be like, "What? Right. Being stuck in traffic is about me learning patience?" Right, because God doesn't need you to move right now, so right. you just have to learn the lesson the hard way. But you should just learn the lesson. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much for this space. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Neely. Thank yeah, you, yeah. Durham. Thank you, Mumsy. Thank you, everyone, and anyone who helped pitch in. Thank you all for coming. This is awesome. <laughs> So what do I think we do when we're sinning? I really think that, right, we know that the Torah, that all of existence is made out of letters. And in order for a letter to exist, there has to be a color differentiation, right? So we have the white existence with the black letters, right? The white fire and the black fire. Am I getting some people? Yeah, yeah, the Torah, the Torah okay. itself, cool, cool, cool. Sure. Right, on the Torah itself, we have black and white. 
So technically, in this dualistic world, in this like matrix that we see in this world, we the only reason that it's a matrix is because there's a black and white. We can't see that everything's actually just one of these, right? Mm -hmm. We have this duality. So I think sinning is showing that blackness in yourself for someone else to see that this is the black and white world. Of, like it's it's taking Whoa. the red pill, the red pill, to for someone else. It's like a sacrifice because we're all a circle, right? So when one person goes into the circle, another person goes out. I don't know. That's where I went. That's cool. I like that. I'm gonna share my mine on sinning. Yeah. I learned about sinning that it's like a famous one. It's okay. They can. Oh. <laughs> it's really not. The idea of sinning <laughs> is that essentially we all have, as if imagine this little rope to God, like of 613 strands. And then every time oh. I sin, I'm cutting a strand. Very cool. And I'm cutting a strand. I'm disconnecting from God. Is I, what, one way that I look at what it really means. Oh. Wow. From God. Totally. All right. Who, does anyone else want to share? Yep. It's coming around. Dun, 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 dun. Wisdom from the ladies. This is called Get Ula. Yes. Okay. Hi. So I just want to add to that because when Yay. we are sinning, uh, the, the Balatanya said that we do, we pray that rope. But mm. we also, when we come back to Hashem, we tie a, a knot in that rope, which makes the rope stronger than it was. And shorter. Before the first, and shorter. Oh, before, the distance. Before the sin. So it, it brings us closer and brings and makes a relationship yeah. So who got, who, who got, who, what are we doing when you do tshuva? That was one of the cards. It's that idea. Oh. What are we doing when we do tshuva? We're retying the knot and we're making the distance between us and Hashem shorter. Would anyone else like to share? I'll share. Yeah, get it. Sorry, hold on. Okay, so what? Oh no, first I'm doing this one. <laughs> so what are you doing when you're on your computer? What are you really doing? What are you really doing? Yeah, so red pill us. I feel like it's also like the phone because like I don't go on the computer much at all, but I feel like oh my gosh, we're all like in a way kind of slaves to this phone. Mm -hmm. And whoever has a smartphone, I think we're all kind of slaves. My husband actually has a kosher phone, and my other best friend has got a kosher phone. And I was like, wow. everyone around me is getting. Phones, but it's yeah, freedom. <laughs> and it's, it's freedom, phones, right? Guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but like it's not even swap. Everyone's being a slave, and everyone oh, thinks that this is what we need to do. Like this is my third hand. This is me. Yeah. So what are we really doing? So what are we doing? We're just we're just really getting anxious, stressed out, depressed, alone, sad, wow. and right. and lost, right. and really losing ourselves. Searching for connection. Searching and for connection, yeah. but like disconnecting, yeah. and not even barely. I feel like there's so much, there's so much more wow. bad these days on the on this thing that like it's it's getting so lost. So that like what? So now let's say pretend you're a therapist and your client comes to you and they say, "Oh, I have a phone addiction. What is really happening for me?" And what would you say? Right, you so say you're, you're probably well, in why pain. Why are you going on there? Like, do you oh. feel like you want to like speak to people? So and maybe like, like we're in pain or we're or distracted or we're avoiding to or have conversations. Like no one talks anymore. Searching for a voice note is a conversation these days. Distraction, right? A voice so note is a conversation. It's not even really a conversation. You have to have a to talk to people on the phone. Okay, that's that's okay. But like in person, like text is not a conversation. We're getting more distracted. We're getting more distracted yeah. to really think we're, we're trying to connect. So, so like, yeah, we want to ask, what are we really... I want to open this so, to everybody to really be like, okay, like, ask yourself one question, because, like, is this control? This thing is made to control you. Wow. They That's made true. this I thing to have you addicted to it. Addicted, so, addicted. So bring it, bring yeah, it to much, God for a second. Bring it to God. Amazing. What are we really doing? God puts this so, addiction in yes. our hands, and so I what? Think, I think this is a part of the, the, like the golden calf. This is part of like the, oh. the um, Abode Zara of our day and age. I think that's what it is. So, so <laughs> I went oh. there because I feel oh. like my, my husband so, talked about so this. Like, message I my, this in so what message am I... Or at least. I'm like, okay, this is what I can do it. So then what am I really doing is I'm avoiding connection with God or I'm avoiding belief that God is one? What am I What am I really doing? I'm trying to get us on one foot. I think everyone has their own thing that they're doing, but right. I think that okay. like, you're losing yourself. Like, losing yourself? Okay. You're losing yourself. All right. What Sweet. Really Fine. Doing? What are we really Hashem? doing? Like, this is a real question. You're losing their connection to Hashem, for sure. Or to ourselves, and or then that's the same. It's, it's one, right? It's all one. Whoa. Hi. But, but also, I feel, I feel like there, there's... There, there's a boundary with everything. Like there, there's obviously you could use the phone as Bodhisattva, which is the idol worship, to disconnect from your source and from people. However, what you're doing, Lily, right? You're using it in order to be a connector to millions of people or a thousand people. I don't know how many people. Hello, guys. Millions of people. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Like it's still you still. 
Depending on the intention, depending on So you're on saying how you're you doing, can be on your phone, and then what are you really doing for but the good? You, what you're doing is... Okay. Guys, we got to get this safe. We have to help the people on Facebook get this out. Yeah. One foot. Well, okay. we do so, this. So what, what's the question? <laughs> what are you, so you're saying you can also use your phone for the good. Exactly. So However, what are you really doing then? What, then? Then you're actually doing good for the world. You're okay, doing well, I want to take this deeper, guys. Come huh. on, come on. Bring okay, us wait, in. Bring wait, us wait, in. Okay. Can I connect it? Can I yeah, you can connect, connect it. Connect it. How do you get out of this world when of like, what am I doing? Am I wasting my time? Because there's an app called TikTok. TikTok literally means, do you want to waste 15 <laughs> minutes of your life? <laughs> and you're yeah. Yeah. No. TikTok, like wow. TikTok, 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 you're wasting 15 minutes. I used to do that. You, I deleted uh, you, uh, YouTube because I kept watching TikTok just to like let go of time, but then I'm like, what do you mean? I'm wasting my time. An hour and a half later, I'm still on my phone. <laughs> and then, so, so what did I, how did I get out of it? I took the addiction out of it, right? And now I'm just using my phone for WhatsApp just to connect with people. However, however, I really, really recommend to make a to-do list in your life. Well, what are you doing with it? That, what are we really connect, doing? To reconnect. Holy. Whole, okay. Okay. I want to say, I have on my to-do list, on my notebook, holy human avoda. My wow, to-do list is not a to-do list. This is, even if it's tiny things, like That's get fun. new trash bags. My to-do list is my human avoda in this world. Okay. Human, that's, wow. that's a, to, a to-do list is wow. what are we really doing? Wow. Huh? Wow. Yes. Sweet. <laughs> Anyone else want to go on? Yeah, go around because I want to. Yeah, cut I'm me. I'm going to come back to the, the stuck in traffic. Okay, so you come back to stuck in traffic. Oh. City, like sit. Oh, oh, my God. God. oh yeah. So what are we really so, doing? So when you're stuck in traffic, you're speeding, you're like, come, like I said, coming back to the present moment, is you can't regret the past that got you where you're at. You can't, right. see, you're not oh. moving. Oh, you're so we're practicing there, not you're, you're letting go of like, regret? You know, here I am. Wow, I like and, that. Yeah, yeah no letting go so, of regret. Yeah, you're looking around and paying attention to actually where you're at in the wow. moment. And you're breathing, and you're like, and learning not to, you know, all the Right, what am I doing? I'm just... Breathing. <laughs> I'm just being. Right. Which like, is like Hashem, what Hashem calls himself. We learned also wow. last week or two weeks ago. Hashem's name is Eheye Asher Eheye. I am that I am. So we're literally practicing godliness. Riz, did you want to share? Yeah, sure. Okay, sweet. Okay, so okay. Um, I'll start with this one. Yeah. Dealing with you, sadness. What are we really doing? Um, well, I mean, so I think that we're when we're, when we're in sadness is we're... Um, like we're, we're mourning basically we're mourning something we don't have mm-hmm. or mourning something that we want that we don't have yet or something that we lost or whatever and um, and and I think I mean it all goes back to like Amina Muna. You know, and Muna yeah, yeah, and that what, that's what we're doing right yeah. there we go on one foot yeah. what are we doing with everything in this yeah. life oh well, we're just just reminding keep, keep trying to keep getting back to the space of 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 is Hashem and anything that takes us down the spiral. I mean, obviously, there's like emotional healing and dealing with our wounds and etc. 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 And it's like ultimately, if we can, like, when we can lift ourselves out of it, we're lifting ourselves out to Hashem to being like, oh no, everything, like you're saying, being like, in this moment, mm-hmm. everything's exactly as it should be, exactly as it needs to be. Yeah, I broke up with that person. Yeah, I lost that job. Yeah, I lost my money. Yeah, my car broke down. But that's perfect. That's Hashem. That's not something else. So. I just want to just comment because Corinne is far bringing with us and she says, Holy Sisters, powerful wisdom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thanks for being part of our far bringing, Corinne. So, did you want to say something else? Um, so, yeah, so I think that, I mean, I think that we're like, we're, we're forgetting that God is really running the show. So, yeah, um, what are we doing here? We're remembering so, that God's running the yeah. show. Essentially, that's pulling the curtain back off the website. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sean Kyle Buck says, Every moment that you're sad, you're actually committing suicide. Oi! Oh, okay. Every single moment <laughs> you're sad. Suicide. Does anyone else want to share what are we really doing here? Yeah? Oh, yeah, I love that. All right. This is um, the 
this is sans video, right? Yeah. Right. We're gonna do this without video? Okay, sweet. Oh, this is holy. This is our holy Yay! teacher, Riva. She teaches us Torah. Um, so we said this, you, you, got, you got it? What are we really doing? What are we really fight? doing when we're in a fight? Whoa. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Can, you, can, you, can you also remind me after this that I want to share what are we really doing when we're in anger? Whoa. Um, the first thing that came to my mind was um, this beautiful piece of Torah from Rabbeinu about Hashabat Avedat, about lost objects. So I think the first... Um, First thing we're doing when we're really in a fight for me is noticing that Hashem is connecting me and Hashem is disconnecting me. Mm -hmm. I very often think it's, it's well, maybe I, you know, there is a level of the of the tshuva and it becoming uh, back in alignment and seeing where I was out of alignment, getting to see a mirror for sure, but also. Um, Surrendering into um, being able to control what, what we what comes into our life and what leaves our life. Surrendering control. Yeah, surrendering also what who comes in and who leaves. Uh -huh. And um, sometimes a fight is oh. Hashem's gentle and not so gentle way of also separating souls for a while. We, wow. We need to learn other lessons. Not wow. Right. Wow. It's like it's like oneness time of dualistic time, but really the dualistic time. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the camera. The dualistic time. It's okay. No, it was cool because because when two people are in a fight, they have to get separated a little bit to become just oh, in their own li exactly. little side like I'm white and you're black we're not black and white right now like I have to be white right separating now separating to come back together right right to like be the one in the, in the fight to separate exactly. so we can come closer right? yes yeah, exactly. there's definitely also the place of the um, I've been noticing a lot lately you know using the, the what we call the nasira you know sort of that say what nasira is in English yeah. please nasira is the uh, burning pain of being separated from that which really does make us feel whole and complete. Okay, then I have to just interject because I learned from Pearl Lopian that her philosophy on what anger is, is sadness that we're disconnected because initially we remember Whoa. being one in our soul and when I'm angry at you or when we're in a fight, I'm so sad and so upset that we're not totally one flesh that I, I the, the only unhealthy right. way of expressing it is right. yeah. anger is <laughs> yeah exactly it's anger so is is yeah. is upset over being disconnected mm. right. for wow. sure but isn't that amazing the main part too yeah at least in my experience um, in this last bit of time is um, oh, growing my tea ferret <laughs> growing your tea ferret in other words sometimes a fight <coughs> can help see where there's an imbalance uh -huh. of, um, uh, it's like a recalibration tool. over giving right or um, or not communicating our needs yeah or not having good boundaries not having good boundaries totally isn't yeah that, that sure. fight can very often shine a light on where the energy is coming out from me or coming into me or out of harmony or, or are imbalanced. So basically, oh, we what are so we good. really doing when we're fighting <laughs> is we're recalibrating our imbalanced sphere of, yes. right. our imbalanced Kabbalistic energies. Imbalanced. We're, we're rebalancing, yeah, that's basically what we're doing in yoga. Yeah. Would anyone else like to share? I can also turn it off so we can be natural. <laughs> okay, good, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna close us off. Can't wait to keep learning with you, Facebook world. Again, Yay! always open to sponsorship. Hope that you gain something from this Moshe red pilling us and really just take, I don't know where to look. Really. <laughs> Oh, I love the, the eye makeup too. That's great. You did awesome. Um, just this idea of like looking at our lives and saying, like, wait, what am I? What am I really even doing here? You know? And like, may that be a blessing for us. And see you later. Bye.